What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a video, of course, about the strange legacy of Troika Games. Troika was founded by three people, made three cult classic games, before ultimately shuttering its doors in 2005. Now the three games that Troika made were Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura, Temple of Elemental Evil, and lastly, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Now, I have played and reviewed each of these titles, but this video is largely about the company, and if you want information about those three games in particular, I'll link to my reviews below. But in this video, we're going to discuss some of the history behind Troika Games, and naturally, of course, its legacy as well. But first up, the history. Troika Games was founded by Tim Kaine, Leonard Boyarsky, as well as Jason Anderson. All three of these people worked for Interplay in the 90s and are famed for working on a great many RPGs, but at this time it was primarily the Fallout franchise, of course Fallout 1 and 2. Now, citing disagreements with Interplay about their positioning for the future, basically, all three of these people left and decided to found Troika Games. Troika is a Russian word that essentially means three, and often you'll hear it used in reference to three people working together, especially in a management capacity. Another similar word would be triumvirate, but that's where they got the name Troika from. Now, the company itself was founded in 1998, and originally it was going to work with one publisher, Sierra Online, as it was known at the time, or Sierra. However, all of their games wound up being published by different people. So in 1998 to 2001, they were working on Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura, which was their first title. Now, in terms of sales performance, at least initially, this is the game that did the best for them, and it sold initially about 235,000 units and had generally positive reviews despite citing of tons of bugs and the combat being pretty rough around the edges, which is in general a theme that you'll see for all of Troika's existence. As with Arcanum and their future titles, they were under insane time crunches and as such, they released incredibly buggy games, which we'll talk more about here in a bit. But the core basis of every game they released was pretty positively looked upon, even though it, again, had a ton of bugs. Now, after the release of Arcanum, interestingly enough, they actually began working on two titles at the same time. These, of course, being Temple of Elemental Evil, as well as Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Now, interestingly enough, there was a sequel planned for Arcanum that was ultimately shelved because of disagreements between Sierra and Valve, from what I understand. So unfortunately, that never happened. So over the next couple of years, both teams at Troika Games were working on their two respective titles, with Temple of Elemental Evil ultimately being released first. This game released in... 2003 on September 26th. Now this particular title did not review as well and it is actually officially Troika's lowest reviewed title. Moreover, it sold about half of what Arcanum had sold previously with only about 128,000 units initially. Again, we'll circle back to that. And that brings us to Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, which is the cult classic to end all cult classics, let's be honest. Now, this game has a variety of things that were interesting about it. However, probably the biggest thing to know is that at its launch, this game was a flop. It only sold about 72,000 copies on its release. And with its initial release, it was almost unplayable, which is largely why. However, it did have another very big thing going against it. And that is because Bloodlines actually released on November 16th, 2004, which might sound like nothing particularly important. However, that is the same day that Half-Life 2 released. Now, interestingly enough, while Bloodlines sold the worst initially, to date, it is their best selling of these three titles. Now, how can that be, you might be wondering? Well, quite frankly, digital distribution. You see, while there was an initial attempt at working on Fallout 3, but unfortunately, after Bloodlines, Troika was unable to find a publisher for their unnamed post-apocalyptic game, which again was later revealed to have been a, an attempt at Fallout 3. However, they were unable to, again, find a publisher, etc., 
and ultimately it went to Bethesda. And this lack of finding funding or an ability to make their next game ultimately led to the closure of Troika. Now, for their three games, pretty much all of the rights to them have reverted to other companies. There's a lot of stuff around this, but basically these days, Activision owns the rights to Arcanum, which will soon be Microsoft, if Microsoft's deal to buy them goes through, which it is likely to. Hasbro, and thus Wizards of the Coast, owns the rights to Temple of Elemental Evil. And while Bloodlines was actually published by Activision, strangely enough, these days the World of Darkness IP and thus Vampire the Masquerade is owned by Paradox Interactive. And these companies, etc., through digital distribution means have actually gotten these games to the masses via digital distribution. These days you can buy these games on Steam or GOG. Bloodlines and Arcanum you can actually buy on Steam, and Temple of Elemental Evil can only be found on GOG. And while truth be told, even in this state they are pretty rough around the edges, all three of these games are again cult classics that have very dedicated fan bases that have made unofficial patches for them as mods that make playing them very doable and honestly a pretty fun experience even today in 2022. And as such, some of these games have really seen a second life in this way. However, None more so than Bloodlines, just through Steam alone, somewhere between 500,000 and 1 million copies, though I don't have the exact number, as compared to Temple of Elemental Evil and Arcanum, who have only sold about an extra 100 to 200,000 via Steam and GOG. So all of those things said, we are ultimately left with, again, the very odd legacy of Troika Games being founded by these three people, making three games, all of which are cult classics that released as a giant buggy mess, but were so beloved by the community that they were essentially fixed after the fact by the community through patches and mods, etc., that make them very much so the intended experience. And all of that just kind of leaves you with this very strange story about this company with huge ambitions that I feel like was just hit with the reality of financials and frankly pressure from publishers to get video games out the door as quickly as possible. But our story doesn't exactly end there. Whatever happened to the founders of Troika Games? Well, they are very much so still working in the industry. Their individual paths have varied a little bit, but two of them are currently working for Obsidian Entertainment, that is Tim Kaine and Leonard Boyarsky, and Jason Anderson, interestingly enough, works at In Exile Entertainment. Now, since Troika Games, all of them have worked on very notable RPGs in the industry, but what I think is actually more interesting is that these days, they all work for Microsoft, technically, as Microsoft owns both Obsidian Entertainment as well as in Exile Entertainment. Combined with Microsoft's acquisition, soon to be, of Activision, and its previous acquisition of ZeniMax, or the Bethesda Softworks Publishing Group, and you've combined a lot of the people who worked on Fallout in its original iterations of Fallout 1 and 2, you've also got all three members of Troika Games working for the person who owns the IP now for Arcanum, and while they don't by any means own the rights to Temple of Elemental Evil or Bloodline, lines anymore. You nonetheless have the three people who were the vision of Troika basically being reunited with their roots and ironically the reason they left Interplay to begin with, which is the Fallout franchise, which means that these days there is actually a potential to see these three people working on IPs that were very clearly important to them at one point, which would certainly be interesting to see. But in the broad scheme of things, Troika is just such a weird story in the games industry. And while their games were absolutely a technical mess in terms of being playable and the bugs, etc., they were nonetheless very much so appreciated and loved by a fan base for their design, their direction, and truthfully, we really haven't seen anything like these three games repeated ever since. And I find that especially hilarious, by the way, for Bloodlines in particular, because, of course, Vampire the Masquerade is about the cursed lives of vampires, and Bloodlines, more so than the other two games by Troika, was known for being a bit of a development hell. And combined with the subject matter of being cursed vampires and them living under the masquerade, which means humans can't know about their existence, makes for a sort of meta joke, if you will, about the development of that game, 
being hell to get it released, which in and of itself is, you know, kind of just a little funny nod. However, then you realize that Bloodlines 2 has also been trapped in development hell, as recent news would tell you, and it's almost like that particular franchise is actually cursed with its development, which is fitting for, again, the subject matter. But with all of that said, guys, honestly, if you get the chance to play any of the three titles mentioned here, or if you just want to hear more about them in the reviews down below, while in their base state they are honestly not great at all, they are some truly special games that with mods and patches developed by the community, I think they are amazing titles, well worth your time, and people should definitely check them out. All of that said, truly, thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day. Thank you.